Imagine that you are powerful beyond your wildest dreams. Your own unique and powerful soul is your very essence, leading you closer to the true source of beauty, magnificence, and wonder that is found deep within your being. Powerful Soul is about you. It's about helping you uncover the true nature of your soul. Once you understand the power of who you truly are, you will be unstoppable and you will begin to live your best life. This show is a tool to help you, once again, reclaim the power of your soul. No matter how hard I look, I'm still blind. It's not what you see, but what you find. Welcome to episode 10 of Powerful Soul. I am your host, Lori Micah, and as always, I am so glad that you're here today. Our topic is going to be loss as a powerful soul. I know when you hear that word loss, it probably sends your mind into that downward spiral. Loss of power, loss of anything can be scary. And this year is certainly no exception. I don't think that anyone has escaped loss in their life in 2020 and the year that we've experienced. I think it's really put a spotlight on loss. But today I want to talk about how you can turn loss into power, power to fuel your soul, to help you get yourself to where you want to be, to where you need to be, to where you can be, because loss can actually be a very, very powerful accelerator. And I'm going to share a couple of stories of loss that I've experienced myself this year. I don't think that anybody has escaped loss. I know a lot of you listening have uh, probably lost jobs or have family members who have lost jobs, and that can be so super scary, a loss of income. I'm sure that there are a lot of you who have lost loved ones this year due to a myriad of circumstances, potentially illnesses and um, other situations. So I'm so sorry for all of you listening who have experienced the loss of a loved one this year. I am a part of that community as well, and so I feel the pain. But I think the biggest loss that we've experienced this year is a loss of connection to each and every person that we've had a traditional connection with in our lives. For many of you, uh, your jobs may have changed so that you're not interacting with people and your coworkers on a daily basis. Um, I'm sure that there are a lot of you who have been afraid to interact with your loved ones because you don't want to pass on any illness to anybody else. And I'm sure that there are a lot of you who have experienced the loss um, of connection to loved ones because of our inability to travel like we normally do. This has just been a very, very strange time. And I want to talk about how I've experienced some very great losses, but have actually used it to increase the power of my soul. So for me, 2020 has been a year of tremendous personal loss. Um, I think the first loss that impacted me was back in March when um, I lost um, a great love in my life, a relationship that was really significant and important to me. In my lifetime, I can count on one hand my significant romantic relationships. And um, I've talked to you about my loss of Mark, my twin flame, my passed away loved one who sends me signs and guides me from the other side. And we talked back in episode eight about twin flame connections, but I have been, I don't know if I want to say lucky or fortunate or unfortunate to actually encounter two twin flames in this lifetime. And I have been told that that is extremely um, unusual and rare. And I think it's because um, with each of these twin flame relationships, we were meant to send special energy into the world to um, to help change the world in a way that the two of us could only do by combining our energies. And um, I've talked a lot about how Mark has worked with me from the other side to help me continue our twin flame connection and contract by creating artwork and inspiration that we've sent into the world in form of um, paintings of flying hearts with inspirational messages and books that promote healing of people who have lost loved ones. 
But this recent loss um, in March was actually kind of unexpected. And um, it was a, it hit me really hard and hit me in a way um, I didn't um, expect to have this loss. I really thought that this was going to be the person, this is going to be my person, potentially the person I would grow old with and spend the rest of my life with. And that was not to be. And this loss um, kind of catapulted me into a different realm and the way that I decided to process this loss was to write about it. It was almost like, I almost feel like I was possessed in some ways. Um, I wound up writing in eight weeks, 150,000 words, which turned into an, an entire book, a novel. Um, and just to give you perspective, um, 150,000 words in a normal 11 font size print would be over 400 page book. So this was a tremendous amount of writing that I was uh, doing in a very short time. And while it was happening, it was a very transformative process because it allowed me to kind of get what I would call almost like a poison out of my system. It was almost like I had venom running through my system as a result of actions and things that happened in this relationship. And by writing them down, I was able to actually release them and get rid of them, get them out of my body, get that energy and that negative vibration out into a more positive form, um, actually in a way that I think will probably help a lot of people. Um, I actually changed the font size. So this book isn't going to be quite so large, but, um, I do plan on releasing it in next year in 2021. I think it's a better time to release that book than to try and release it this year in 2020. But I think that writing and purging is a very powerful way that we can deal with loss. And not everybody's a writer, so I get that. Um, it has definitely been something that I've embraced over the last several years. Um, for those of you who have been listening to the podcast, you know about the book that I wrote about the relationship with Mark my passed away loved one called Signs Surround You, Love Never Dies. And that definitely had a cathartic um, process and resulted in me being able to process that loss and use it in a way that could empower me to help other people as they've experienced losses the way uh, that I had in that relationship and to help people see their own signs. So the book that I've just written um, is called once a cheater, people tell you who they are up front, a true story. And it's actually a two-part book. It's a part about um, the relationship I had with my twin flame. And the second part is about the lessons that I learned in having that experience with that twin flame. And so I'm almost um, don't want to use the word loss in that relationship because really I don't think that we ever lose when we choose love. No matter how it ends, I think that we grow and we develop in ways that we wouldn't otherwise if we didn't experience that love. And I really do believe that as powerful souls, we are love. Our greatest lesson to learn here on this earth is about love, how to give love, how to receive love, how to experience love. And sometimes that includes the loss of love. Actually, probably always that includes the loss of love because as we go through our life, we lose people who were um, important to us just, just through the process of living and as other people grow old before we do, or sometimes um, we lose them before their, before their time. But the other way that you can process a loss, um, if you're not a writer, is by talking if you have a, a friend that you can talk to, that's often a great way to process a loss. And I think it's really important to do so. And um, sometimes you're going to have to be the one that starts these conversations because I think when we witness somebody who has experienced a loss, I think sometimes we become afraid to engage with them because we don't want to hurt them and open the wound or pour salt in the wound. But really, by the ability for us to talk about a relationship that we've lost with somebody um, who cares about us has a, a lot of healing 
properties. And again, like I talked about in that book that I wrote, it releases. And when we can release this energy out of our body, it allows us to become more whole. It allows us to raise our vibration again and to be able to make peace with and deal with a loss in a way that we couldn't if we just kept it all bottled up and kept it to ourselves. So I think it's really important to embrace um, a loss and not to run from it, not to bury it, not to curl up in a ball. And I'm not saying that you can't be sad about your loss and you can't go through those grieving processes, which of course are the natural way that we experience a loss through sadness and, and then sometimes anger. But at some point, we have to process it. We can't keep it bottled up. And this is how we stay powerful as souls. This loss, um, like I said, was very significant, but I found a way to turn it around. And I do believe that now as I look back on it, I don't look at this as being something necessarily negative that's happened. I look at it as an opportunity for growth and for change and for process. And um, it's just an experience that we go through in life. And uh, you know that through every one of these podcasts, I talk about at least two um, of my favorite things. And this brings me to the first favorite thing I want to talk about today, which is a medium that I found named Stephen. He is a lawyer by day, medium by night. He also has his own radio show called Through the Static. He is a very amazing evidential medium. And I was lucky to find him while I was listening to a podcast on YouTube. And I reached out to him and had an incredible reading. It was so incredible. I actually scheduled a second reading with him. Um, and I'm going to talk about that reading in a little bit because it's going to um, focus on the second loss I want to talk about for me for 2020. But as far as mediums go, I want to highly recommend Stephen. I'm going to have his information um, highlighted in the show notes and you can reach him stephenthemedium.com. And his uh, last name is Masek, M-A-C-E-K. And I really love the way that he brought Mark's personality through really in my reading. Mark has been sending me a, an amazing, incredible sign over the last 20 months. Mark has sent me the sign, Hold the Line. And it is a um, song by the band Toto. And when I last saw Mark alive, he played four Toto songs when he was with the band Starship and Hold the Line was one of them. And over the last 20 months, what he's done is when I'm listening to the radio station XM Yacht Rock Radio, all of a sudden the song will end, the screen will freeze, and the song Hold the Line will be begin playing for almost a full four minutes. And when the song ends the screen updates and goes back to the normal radio programming. And the incredible part about receiving this very special sign on that particular station is that I have been able to confirm that Yacht Rock Radio does not play the song Hold the Line. They play it on some of their other stations like 70s on 7 and Classic Rewind, but they do not play it on Yacht Rock Radio. So he is literally taking over the radio playing a song that is not normally played and it's only happening for me. And this has been such a special sign. And since it's been happening um, for 20 months and it's happened a full 28 times, I wanted to talk to Stephen Medium and have him connect to Mark and kind of give me some insight into what this means. And one of the things we talked about is in this twin flame relationship that ended most recently for me. Um, as a powerful soul, he said he wanted to picture like holding a rein. So you're on a path. You have a path that leads behind you to your past. You have a path that is your present path. And then you have a future path. And you literally hold the reins. You hold the line as you walk through your life and have these different experiences. And I think that sometimes when we enter into a relationship, we become afraid, afraid of loss, afraid of the relationship not going the way that we want to. And the way that we can lose our power in those relationships is by letting go of the reins. 
and letting that power kind of, um, if you could picture almost like an electrical wire. And if you were holding on to that wire and it was just conducting electricity and you were just following it along, it would just lead you in the direction that you're meant to go. But if you let it go, it starts to wildly swing in all kinds of different directions. And now you've kind of dropped your power. You've um, you've lost your control. And so it's really important, Stephen said through Mark, to hold the line and to hold on to your power, to not drop it, to not let it go, to not let it run wild, to just sit with it and be strong with it and then let it lead you where you need to go. And um, it was explained to me that one of the things I did in that relationship that I lost was I dropped the line. I I lost the power. I became um, afraid of it. I let the fear of that relationship kind of take over. And instead of holding on to it and just letting it lead where it needed to go, I kind of threw my hands up and let, let the let the lines down. So I think that this is a message I want to share with you. It was such an insightful message when I heard it. And I wonder how often we do this in relationships, not just in romantic relationships, but maybe in relationships that aren't um, very smooth with different family members or maybe sometimes in friendships. But I think it's really important as powerful souls that we understand the power that we have and that if we can just hold on to that power and let us let it lead us in the direction that we're supposed to be, we'll stay on our highest and greatest path. We'll take steps in the direction that we're meant to take instead of just um, succumbing to the fear that that we can all experience when we have um, relationships or we're faced maybe with relationship losses. Okay, so I'm going to share the second tremendous loss, uh, personal loss that I had of 2020. And that is that I actually was workforce reducted. And if you notice, I did not say that I lost my job because I think I take my power away when I say that. So um, I had a, a, a corporate job that I had had for a while. We had actually done very, very well uh, as a sales team. As a matter of fact, we were number one in the world in our little sales team, not one year, but two years in a row. And even with that kind of track record, I still was subject to a workforce reduction. Um, My company made some changes and some things happened and I was on the wrong side of a spreadsheet. And the next thing you know, um, I no longer have a job in 2020. And uh, I know that that can sometimes be a scary thing, but I'm not letting myself feel scared about it. I actually think it's probably going to be one of my greatest opportunities. And I think that in a few years from now, I'm going to look back and be really excited about this. I've wanted to own myself for a very long time, and there's been a part of me that's always held myself back thinking, well, maybe if I just have one more year at this company doing a job that I'm not super happy doing and then doing all of these things that I love on the side, like sending my artwork into the world or writing these books or recording this amazing podcast to help everybody understand the power of their soul. These are all things I've been doing on the side. And I wanted to own myself for a long time and have like this very kind of a full spiritual business. And I've really held myself back thinking that I just needed more time. And I think the universe stepped in and said, nope, the time is now. It's time to get busy. So I'm actually going to be using this opportunity to take a break and not even uh, search for another corporate job. I'm going to try to step out and create this business uh, that I, that is my own business. And I'm going to be working on that. So uh, sometimes it's how you look at things and how you talk about them. Actually, if you're one of my friends who doesn't know about this, I really haven't even talked to very many people about this. I, I haven't even told everybody in my life that this has happened because I really don't see it as a significant loss, even though, you know, yeah, it's a little bit scary to lose an income, but I just understand that if I focus my attention as a powerful soul, we have the ability to manifest and bring to us the resources we need to create the life that we want to have. And I think that that's exactly what's going to happen. So I'm going to put my money where my mouth is, and I'm going to uh, put this into practice for myself and uh, see how we can increase the power of 
my ability to create this um, job, this dream, this dream job that I've been doing on the side and make it my full time focus so that I can send this amazing energy into the world that helps a lot of people. So I'm actually really, really excited about this. There are lots of ways that we can process and look at how to reinvent ourselves. And I think this is a year of reinvention for a lot of people. How many of you are listening whose jobs completely changed? Like you're no longer going into an office. Maybe you're no longer traveling. That was actually a huge change for me back in March where I was uh, on a plane almost every other week and I went to literally no travel and all of my job was being done online and on Zoom calls and on conference calls. And it, it's a big change, right? But um, when we focus on what we want and how we want to think about things, then we actually regain our power because I think the loss of power happens when we feel like we don't have any control. And the one thing that we always have control over is how we talk about something and what we do as a result of um, some loss or some setback. And I think that it's really important to be able to rebrand ourselves. For those of you who are experiencing a loss of a job or of income, I'm right there with you experiencing the same thing. Um, And to make my story even more impactful, it kind of happened at a really weird time. I have a dog who I am absolutely in love with. She is my everyday hiking partner, and I've had her for 11 years And she unfortunately got bit in the face by a rattlesnake in our own yard. And it was um, after she had just gotten out of the hospital, after she got some anti-venom and she's totally fine now and totally recovered, that I was hit with this workforce reduction. And I thought it was actually kind of a, uh, put everything into perspective because I realized the most important things in my life are the relationships, the relationships I have with the people in my lives, the friends, the family, my dog. And it really put into perspective that a job is just a job. And when we think that it's any more than that, um, and then there's a loss, then sometimes that can uh, send us into a tailspin. And if we can just look at things a little bit differently, we really can take our power back. I'm going to focus on the power of creating and manifesting the thing that I want most. And if you're not in the situation where you're doing that for yourself, maybe this is the year to reflect on how you can have what you want in your life. You know, maybe it it's that you lack some education. Maybe it's time to think about taking an, an online class that helps you increase your ability to um, attract the job that you really want to have because we spend a lot of time in our job. And I think it's super important for us to be able to enjoy what we're doing every single day. If you're not in the situation yet where you can enjoy what you're doing every single day, maybe you can, like I did, start something on the side and then get that to the point where it grows and it can become something bigger. Because as much as I experienced losses this year, I also had tremendous experiences in 2020. I actually published nine books this year, which is something I I would never, if you had told me in 2019 that I was going to publish nine books, I would have told you that you're crazy. But I actually wound up doing that and not only publishing uh, nine books this year, but having a total of 10 books that I've written. By the end of 2020, seems like something that um, almost from a from a dream, but we really are very powerful in our ability to start creating the things in our life that really serve us emotionally and help fulfill our soul and our purpose here on this earth. Since we're talking about loss in this episode, I want to also share my next favorite thing. Um, I found something quite by accident. So if you're like me and you are a woman who is above the age of about 45, I started to notice that I was losing a little bit more hair than I've ever really lost uh, before. And I just thought it was kind of a fluke, like maybe it was a result of this stress that I had been going through with this relationship and 
in this job situation. But when I did a little bit of research, I kind of accidentally, and I say that with air quotes, if you could see me right now, I accidentally found something, which is a supplement called Saw Palmetto. And um, as a pharmaceutical sales rep for seven years, I like to really do some research on uh, any supplement before I'm going to take it. And I want to read some studies and find out if there's some real statistical significance behind what these supplements are claiming that they do. And I found that this is a supplement that is usually um, geared towards men with prostate issues, but it also, um, they studied it in men and they found that there was a 65% had statistically significant hair regrowth after taking saw palmetto. And I decided what the heck, I didn't really have anything to lose. It wasn't very expensive. It was $20 for a 90 day supply. And I began taking it. I've been taking this now for almost 60 days. And I have to say that the loss that I was experiencing of my hair has significantly decreased almost back to what it was before. And the reason that we start to lose um, a little bit of hair as we age is because there is um, um, a chemical process in our body um, called DHT to, and it allows us to actually lose a little bit of hair. So this is something that has worked for me. I cannot guarantee that it's going to work for everybody, but you know, if you are experiencing some hair loss and like me, you, you think that maybe it's not natural hair loss, then this might be the solution for you. And the reason I don't think that this was an accident is because when I experience something in my life that I don't understand or something that I'm looking for a solution to, one of the first things I do is I tune into and talk to my soul team. And remember, we talked, I think, in episode two or three about how you have a lot of help out there. We all have a soul group on the other side who help and guide us during this lifetime. And there's really nothing that we can't ask for help for, but the the real takeaway is that you have to ask for the help. They won't just intervene because you have free will. So this was actually a problem that I was asking for a solution to. And I was really just astonished when one day I got some information just doing a search that had nothing to do with this, this issue and um, got my own solution. I think it was just pretty cool. This year of loss for me has included a relationship loss, a job loss, both of my kids leaving the state that I live in um, to pursue their own professional careers now that they're done with college and no travel, isolation. Um, I was used to seeing my sister every couple of weeks and, and now I haven't seen her since March. We have just been separated from some of our loved ones. But I will say that for me personally, when I look at this year, I'm not going to look at it with the negativity of any of those losses. I'm going to look at it as a tremendous year of tremendous change because I think that there are some things that are happening, some things that are brewing in this world. And I think that what's happened in 2020 is very purposeful in the sense that it's a wake up call. It's a wake up call for us to understand and know that we are so completely connected to each and every person and how important and significant these connections are. And by putting a spotlight on separation we were, where we didn't get to feel these connections for this almost entire year, I think it reunites us with the truth of the matter that our souls are connected to each and every person and how important it is that we have these relationships, how important these relationships are to our mental health and to probably our physical health as well. For you, I hope that you can take some of the uh, losses that you've experienced this year and you can find a way to process them to get them out of your system, to help increase your vibration again. I hope that you can look back and turn around the reflection of your, your losses so that they um, actually help you become a more powerful soul. I think it's uh, a waste if you're running, kicking and screaming from 2020, because really you should be able to look at this as a year of triumph 
a year of triumph where we realized that you are powerful, more resilient than you know, and maybe this was the year that you have really discovered the power of your soul. After all, you're here listening, and I believe as a powerful soul, you are right where you were supposed to be. So I really thank you for tuning in. I hope that this has given you something to think about, and I hope that you can embrace the power of who you are. As always, you can find me on lorimica.com. I have a comment section on my website page. I would love to hear from you. You can find me at lorimica on Instagram. And also I am revamping my YouTube channel and I hope very soon to take these podcasts and upload them with, with a static picture for the ones that didn't have a recording to go with them. But moving forward, I would like to be able to do a video recording so I can actually connect more and I'll be adding these um, episodes up to that channel very soon. You can also connect with me on Soul Heart Art if you're looking for some inspiration. And I'm going to let Kate Usher and the Sturdy Souls take it away. Never forget that you are a powerful soul and the essence of you is pure spirit. You are a soul in a body, not a body with a soul. Part of your lesson here on this earth is to remember who you truly are. You are beautiful beyond measure and together we can change the world. Thank you and I look forward to connecting with you again very soon. When you love you, you don't need nobody else. Singing la ti da da, oh la ti da ti da da. Life is beautiful when you know just who you are. La ti da da, oh la ti da ti da da.